Hello, welcome to Rhino's Ravens Preview. It's Wild Card Weekend, everybody. And while this is Saturday and there are a few games going on today, the Ravens don't play till tomorrow night. They are at the Cincinnati. They're at the Cincinnati Bengals for the second straight week. It's not great. Well, I mean, I guess it doesn't really mean too much of anything. There have been many times where the first week of the wild card, or I guess the first week of the playoffs being the wild card, two division rivals have played again for the third time. Uh, not, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure of the record, but seeing as how both teams split, I don't know that one team necessarily has the advantage over the other over that. So, well, I don't even know why I brought it up. <laughs> I guess it just see it just seems like something you should I, I should have mentioned, but thinking about it, it doesn't mean a whole lot because they play each other all the time. Really, I mean, as far as football concerned, as far as football goes, they play each other a lot. And while yes, this is in Cincinnati, that doesn't necessarily mean Cincinnati has an advantage. So, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is be, it being the third time doesn't really necessarily mean any team has the advantage because it's the third time. Though, Cincinnati is probably going to win this game. You know, I hope they lose, and I hope the Ravens win, but we shall see. As I usually start out with, I'm going to start out with the injuries. Courtesy of BaltimoreRavens.com, their injury report tab. You see the list that has remained. It, it would appear that it has remained almost constant through the whole year, which is with as far as the names on the list. See Clayus Campbell, though he didn't practice all week, he does not have a game status listed. So I'd say it's a really good chance that he's going to be in there against Cincinnati this week, which should make a big difference. Well, we'll, we'll see. I mean, the theory would be that with him in there in the middle, that would that should ensure that Patrick Queen and Rokon Smith don't have to fight off as many offensive linemen getting up to the second level. Because with... Uh, almost forgot his name there for a minute. With Clayus Campbell in there instead of out, offensive line would have to shift more of their concentration to him instead of being able to get up to the next level. Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards is listed as though he will play. Uh, article I will talk about later says that he is slated to play. Huntley's on the list, but I mean... It's that shoulder and wrist thing again. He's listening as questionable. There is an article for him as well. Jackson. Jackson's out. Again. More to come on that. Actually, I'm going to go on over this whole list here just so you can have the list. But I will be talking about some of these. A lot of these players a little bit. In a little bit. Stevens, as you can see, Stevens is out. It is significant because, actually, I'll wait until I get the article. Otherwise, it'd be like I'm stealing somebody else's words, which I almost did there for a minute. Spend too much time reading some of these people's articles, you and you, and then you go record yourself. You're like, oh, wait a minute. Those aren't my words. Ty Tylen Wallace is out. i He's a wide receiver, and I guess that's why I barely know who he is. I feel like the wide receivers on his team don't play at all. Let's get to the first article, written by Clifton Brown, BaltimoreRavens.com staff writer. It's about J.K. Dobbins. As you can clearly see with this headline, he wants it on his back. That is usually how number one running back number one running backs think. It's I mean, it's nothing new. Not that I'm saying that he shouldn't have written this article. I'm just saying I I hope they all think that way. 
is sub chapter, kind of. Depends on how you look at it, I guess. Anthony Brown gained some experience in week 18. Get to this part about Harbaugh talking about Jackson's recovery. And this is... There was a tweet that Jackson put out, I can't remember how many days ago, about a little more specifics on his injury and what type of sprain ish that he he has with his knee and how he's he's not there fully yet enough to be able to give it a go this Sunday. I do think it is kind of strange that most of us out here, you know, not in the know with the team or these players, we're kind of speculating, well, this was supposed to be like a three or four week injury. So what's he doing? Like, it doesn't seem like he's anywhere closer. Is is the injury worse than we were led to believe? Is Jackson not wanting to push himself because of his contract situation? But at the same time, like he, he's almost damned if he does, damned if he don't at this point. Do you want to give a guaranteed contract to a quarterback that either gets injured frequently or you think may not be willing to put himself out there, risking more injury over money? Some of this is speculation, but I think it's going to boil down to that he's not going to get his guaranteed contract, by the Ravens at least. He will most likely be franchise ta- fr- franchise tagged. Did it? However, he'll have the franchise tag placed on him next year, most likely. Will the Ravens look for a new quarterback or not? Don't know. I would say yes. But here, you know, Harbaugh was asked about, to a certain extent, about the tweet and about the injury specifically. And there is a legal thing that there are some things that they just can't disclose about certain specifics of the injury. And then even more about the tweets, right? Because there is a certain sense of freedom with the internet and social media. These teams don't really have a right to control what players say on Twitter. Players want to comment about this injury or that injury or whatever. That's on them. I think as far as, you know, things that could potentially be hurtful to the organization, they're probably not allowed to say, but as far as that, players, you know, scroll down. Gus Edwards did leave the last game with a concussion. And according to this article, he has cleared that, cleared that ahead of Friday's practice and was a full participant in Friday's practice. So that's, that's good news. Hopefully we can have both of our running backs, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, ready to go and ripping it up down the field. We shall see. Do this article written by Ryan Mink, also staff writer, BaltimoreRavens.com. Tyler Huntley did practice. You see here some of his comments about being between 90 and 100% ish, ready to go. So he's going to play. Is his, what was it, tendonitis? It said in there tendonitis or something, which. Don't remember if I realized it was tendonitis. Or I honestly don't remember. Some of these injuries kind of just get said, and because there is a medical reasoning, I'm just dis- disclose a lot of this information. Doctor patient confidential confident, confident, stumbling all over my words again. Confident, confidentiality kind of thing there. Talks about Gus Edwards, clearing concussion protocol. Here's Marcus Peters, 
Marcus T Marcus Peters is going to return. He will play. And as I was going to say before, this is, as you can see, Ryan Mink's article. Ryan Mink wrote this. As you can see here, Peters is coming back, and it is significant because Stevens is out. Which is bad, but I did like Worley's play last week, even though he did get to be a few times. Having Peters and Worley and Humphrey there, hopefully will go better for the Ravens' pass defense. Huge news as far as contracts go. And this is kind of why I think that, really think that Lamar will not get his guaranteed contract. is because a lot of the money here for the Ravens for the next five years is going to go to Roquan Smith. Uh, where are some of the numbers? Yeah, five-year deal worth $100 million. So this is averaging... 20 million a year for a middle linebacker. I'm not trying to say that he's not worth it. I'm just saying that, wow, that is a shit ton of money. Wow. Whew. Um, I do think based on his play, he has proven that his play is worth it. Well, will that continue? I don't know. I think, I think one of two things happens a lot of times with these big contracts, especially as far as the Ravens go. Either they are a bad judge of talent and a bad judge of the person and their worth work ethic, or they're just straight up unlucky. You think about Joe Flacco after the last Super Bowl and the contract he got and that where his play went after he got that big contract. And I guess the idea a player is thinking is they'll, they're will they making a little bit of money for no rookie deal. So they'll play less cautious, high risk for the high reward, hoping that they'll get the big contract. And when the big contract does come, they do play a little bit more conservative and try to protect themselves, protect the money maker, so to speak. Which does make sense, but... What does that do for the organization? They're paying you all this money, and then you don't go out and perform up to the money. And then you some guys like Ronnie Stanley who get paid and that's like immediately injured. So is that necessarily his fault? Does that mean that he isn't that, you know, he's one of the those people that get paid and then they play more conservatively? Yes, it is a little bit of speculation, and it may it's not usually considered right to question people when it comes to money, but I think it is worth noting that how many times has the Ravens shelled out some of these big contracts and it hasn't panned out for one reason or another, especially recently. Because, you know, in, in, in the Flacco and Stanley case, you just haven't gotten anything out of it. They haven't gotten as much out of it as they thought they were going to do. Yes, now Flacco did deal with some injury. But I think it was like the second half of that big contract. He got it, a knee injury. But, I mean, it goes along with what I was saying about them drafting injured players. A lot of injuries with this team. So... And maybe in this league in general. So you really do have to be careful who you spend your money on. You, you'd you like to go out there and give every player as much money as they want. Sure. And then you can keep all your players that you've drafted and you've spent time training them and developing them and such. But you can't. you just can't do it. So you really have to be careful... Where you spend the money because you're limited. Hopefully, Roquan plays like Roquan. And I'm really hoping they do. And I'm sorry to question him, but I feel like the Ravens have gotten burned in the past. 
Now, I will say that given this organization is the Ravens and one of their biggest, I guess, what was Ray Lewis? Was he their second pick? I think Ogden was the first and Ray was the second pick they ever had. You had possibly one of the greatest middle linebackers in the history of the NFL play for this organization, drafted by this organization. That does carry a certain weight with players that if they don't, that they may not be honoring their the legacy of players like that if they don't play well. So, while Ravens haven't had good luck in the past, I am going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say Roquan's going to play well. He's not exactly the player that Ray Lewis was, but I think he's going to have that type of impact for us for these five years. He's been only been here a few weeks, and people are talking about what kind of leader he is, what kind of man he is, and we can all see how he plays on the field. Yes, he's not as good as Ray Lewis, but as far as the era, era he is in, he's one of the better middle linebackers you're ever going to see this era, at least. So, while we may be losing a lot more Jackson, or we have currently, awesome and we may or may not see him for the rest of however long it looks like we're gonna have Roquan Smith quarterback in our defense and that's what Maryland that's what Baltimore Ravens Mer Mer does right defense defense wins championships so well I don't know how this game is gonna go the defense should be playing well Campbell back, Peter's back, Roquan Smith should be very happy. I think the defense is going to play very well. Hoping I am, hoping I am, hoping they will. But I guess you wish in one hand shit in the other, see which one fills up, fills up faster. So we're going to see, I don't, especially with Campbell back, I don't think Cincinnati is going to be able to run as well. He's going to be sucking up more attention off from the linemen. Like I said before, Queen and Roquan will have more freedom to run around the field and chase down the running backs and hopefully also stay in the middle of the field on a passing play and get in, get in the way, right? So those 10-yard passes to the tight end should be reduced and therefore... All, hopefully all Cincinnati will have are bigger shots down the field to Chase and Higgins. Now with Peter's back, that does bolster the secondary. So, things are looking up, I think, for the defense. We'll see if the offense, if the offense can do their part. Huntley is... Dobbins and Edwards back. That does help. We'll see how Greg Roman handles. God, I want to call him Lamar Huntley. Tyler Huntley in the, in the passing game. They're going to have to move the ball. They're going to have to put points on the touchdowns on the board. Not just points, touchdowns. Yes, I do have confidence in the defense, but Cincinnati's offense, they're rolling. They are rolling. Joe Burrow's got a big arm and he's got big receivers to throw to. I want the Ravens to win, but no, I can't do it. I can't. I, I really can't. As much as I think it's going to be, I now nah, you know what? I'm not even going to do any, any predictions. I'm not even going to do it. I'm not going to change anything. I do think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a much better game than last game. Remember, it is the primetime game tomorrow, Sunday. It's going to do it for me. I am the Angry Rhino. Like, subscribe. Fly, Ravens, fly.